Hi and welcome back to a new video. You probably know that me personally in my private life I'm using a Razer Blade 13 for everything that is on the road traveling simply because it's very light, small and has a very long battery lifetime and it looks beautiful and also feels beautiful. That is the reason why I'm personally using right now a Razer Blade 13 and now because of the Intel gamer days Razer sent this Blade 15 over to me and said that I can check it out, analyze the cooling which is always interesting to me just to see and maybe also compare it to the Razer Blade 13 if they just scaled up the cooling solution or if it's a completely different concept. I always like to see how they manage to uh, get the cooling solution done on some such a very tiny room, especially considering the power of this thing. It has an Intel i7 10875H CPU, which is an 8 core 16 thread CPU together with an RTX 2080 Super Max Q. And in this very tiny format, I think that is quite a lot of power. Therefore, I'm interested to see how they managed to cool this thing. Let's go. Before we start ripping this thing apart, quick word about what you can get with the Razer Blade 15. Obviously 15 means 15 inch display. The exact CPU and display configuration depends on your GPU selection. Starting off you can get it with a 1660 Ti, RTX 2060, RTX 2080 Super Max Q. That is exactly what we have in here. And then depending on your GPU selection you also get your CPU. You can either have an i7 10750H which is a 6 core 12 thread CPU or in the highest model with the RTX 2080 Super Max Q you are getting an i7 10875H which is an 8 core 16 thread CPU, which means that it's basically a 10700K, but non overclockable, lower TDP, but still 8 core 16 threads. The display selection also depends on your GPU and CPU selection, which kind of makes sense. I mean, you don't need a 300 Hz monitor when you only have the 1660 Ti. Therefore, with the 1660 Ti, for example, you're getting 144 Hz uh, Full HD display for gaming. But this one in the highest configuration with RTX 2080 Super Max Q, you can get it with 300 Hz display, which just shows that this thing is purely targeted for gaming, at least that's how I would see it because if you would do it for like production let's say Adobe Premiere personally I would always go for a higher resolution 3k 4k but this thing is also available with a 4k OLED display if you want to use it for production that is probably the better choice obviously this won't have 300 Hertz but you will just have to select what you are looking for. In either of the configurations, this thing comes with 16 gigabyte, 2933 megahertz memory, which I think should be soldered on. Not a fan of that. I love if it's um, a slot memory where you can upgrade it to like 32 gigabyte later, especially for like video production, that would be better. 16 gigabyte and soldered on is probably not enough for production. For mobility this thing is quite lightweight, 2.2 kg, which I think is quite suitable weight for the power it has with the 8 core 16 thread CPU with the RTX 2080 uh, Super Max Q GPU and also keeping in mind that it has a metal chassis which feels very high quality. The reason why I also picked the Blade 13 feels very nice, also the keyboard, keyboard feels proper when you are typing on it. That is something I absolutely love. When it comes to the connection you have 3 times USB A, you have 2 times USB C aka Thunderbolt, you have audio and you also have a full size HDMI connection and for those who are using it for video production it also has an SD card slot which is something that is cool. To open the Blade 15 we have some screws on the back, Torx screws very similar to the Blade 13, I would say even identical, maybe two screws more, but that is all we have to do and then we can lift off the back part. And here we have the internals and yeah, I think I mentioned that I thought it would be soldered on memory, but it's not. That is pretty cool. You can remove those DIMMs and replace it with like 32 GB later on if you need more. So that is great and also M.2 SSD right here if you want to replace it. Stock is 1 TB. Let's say in 2 or 3 years you would want to have like 4 TB then you can simply upgrade this one. And before we proceed taking this thing apart further we will have to remove the battery and cut power. I guess this is for power delivery from the battery. We have more cables right here, but they have so many pins. I don't see why a battery would need or require so many pins. Therefore, I guess it's just this one. 
Battery removal was pretty simple, just removed all the screws around it, took out the battery, it was indeed the correct cable right here and now we can proceed taking a look at the cooling and the cooling solution looks interesting indeed because I cannot spot any heat pipes right now. Not sure if the heat pipes are just fully covered right now with like a piece of metal or if this is just a massive vapor chamber. That is going to be interesting. The cable you see crossing the heat pipe or whatever cooling solution right now, that is the display cable. And the display cable goes into this slot where you have this tiny bar in the front you have to lift up so you can remove the display cable and those cables are quite critical when it comes to handling. First of all we have to avoid any kind of unnecessary bends inside the cable and once we are deciding to assemble everything back in place we have to make sure it's perfectly back into this slot otherwise with 300 Hertz and 1080p yeah there is no room for mistakes otherwise you're not getting a display signal if this does not sit properly. Remove the memory sticks, those are 3200 memory sticks, which is interesting regarding that the CPUs are only allowed or capable of 2933 MHz. This also explains why we didn't see any heatsink because the whole entire thing is basically one heat pipe. It's just a massive vapor chamber can also identify this by the little part on top right here which is used to fill the vapor chamber and like down here and here you can see it's just one massive vapor chamber going to the left cooling block, right cooling block has contact to chipset, voltage regulators of the GPU, GPU memory this should also be power supply of the GPU then power supply of the CPU, CPU itself yeah one massive piece of copper but it still feels light, it still feels light. What I personally find always impressive about those nowadays designs is that, I mean, look at this size of my hand and then compare it to what we have inside, chipset, memory of the GPU, GPU, CPU, all the voltage supply. It's almost high-end desktop performance. I mean, it's, it's desktop performance, not the fastest you can get for a desktop, but it certainly has a good performance and all this on this very tiny room, I think that is quite impressive. Before we head over, check out performance and temperatures, quick look at the Razer software. This is very helpful. I know it's German language. Anyway, you can set your refresh rate, you can adjust CPU, GPU boost in the different mode of your laptop and then also adjust the GPU mode to select if it's also going to use the internal Intel GPU, which can be helpful, for example, for video editing. Otherwise, I selected just to use the NVIDIA GPU. First test Cinebench R20 single threaded performance. We are utilizing only one thread in this test. Currently boost clock somewhere between 4.6 and 4.9 GHz from what I can tell. The CPU in theory can boost up to 5.1 GHz but keep in mind that Cinebench R20 is an AVX based benchmark therefore Therefore, the maximum speed is a little lower as in non-AVX benches such as most of the games you would use. Temperature-wise, the thread that is loaded runs at about 80 degrees Celsius and the package power consumption is at about 40 watt. Two hours later. Single core performance, 480 points on the same level as a 7700K. Therefore, yeah, single threaded performance definitely on a good level. I was just running 3D Mark Time Spy. You can still hear the fans. Or you can't really hear them that much. This Razer notebook luckily is a lot more quiet. Of course, if we compare the 8200 points to the XMG Ultra 17 with about 11200 points, we are dropping in performance, but we are also comparing a 10-core desktop CPU with an 8-core mobile CPU, which is a massive difference, especially in 3D Mark. I will later try to do some charts where we com can compare like the GPU subtest, which makes more sense, I think, for the direct comparison. But personally, 
I would prefer this for mobility because it's a lot lighter and just the fact that it's more quiet also makes it more suitable as a mobile laptop if we com compare that with the Ultra 17 which is more like a stationary system like a portable desktop but this is more like a proper notebook I would say you can use for traveling and in this regard 8200 points in time spy is absolutely solid now i will try to use xtu and do some undervolting because we cannot tune the cpu in a proper way like we cannot overclock it but we can lower cpu core voltage and also cpu cache voltage which should result in a little bit lower power consumption of the cpu with 45 watt it does not really consume that much but if we can lower it to theoretically 40 watts then it can utilize more boost maybe we can get 100 megahertz more out of the cpu therefore maybe get higher performance let's see very satisfying result from undervolting almost 8500 points in 3d mark time spy that is a solid increase things i adjusted is turbo boost short power max to 100 watt with a duration of 128 seconds turbo boost power max to 85 watt and under voltage by 60 millivolt and this setting was pretty much a sweet spot going higher here would result in more power through the cpu therefore less cooling for the gpu and lower score in 3d mark that was the best setting i could find temperature wise i was pretty surprised by the gpu temperature being quite low gpu power also quite low with not even 100 watt but that also makes sense because it's a max q because it's a max q version which tends to clock a little bit lower gpu clock is reading 18 1600 right now here but during the benchmark when i checked with gpu z it was more in the region of like 1350 to 1400 cpu temperature wise 85 degrees celsius max that's also in a region which is absolutely okay summary about the razor blade 15 by the way i didn't do any kind of gaming benchmarks because another german youtuber was using the same device and i was doing like a cooperation with him and he was doing the gaming benchmark part I was lazy so I only did like the XTU and taking apart part therefore don't wonder why I didn't cover the gaming benchmark stuff um, from my side but personally I can say I can absolutely recommend this thing just the build quality is absolutely nice it feels very well built also typing on the keyboard noise level is great it's using a max Q GPU which means that it's restricted in power comparing it to a desktop CPU which is quite obvious it can utilize a maximum of 90 watt when it comes to the power target i also tried everything unlocking the power limit unfortunately i was not successful the only thing you can do which i also tried is using msi afterburner using the voltage frequency curve doing this you can lower the voltage doing under volting on the gpu but the result is that you're also lowering the frequency slightly by about 50 megahertz from my experience therefore you're losing a little bit in performance that's why i didn't do it for the video but in case you're trying to optimize it for let's say maximum cpu performance you can undervolt the gpu therefore save more cooling capacity for the cpu and therefore maybe get 100 megahertz more out of the cpu otherwise for gaming absolutely suitable device you will find all the links in the description below if you're curious about more otherwise thanks for tuning in and see you next time bye By the way, when it was shipped to me, it was shipped in this backpack. Personally, I'm not getting the Razer Blade 15 because for me it's, it's too big. I will stay with my Razer Blade 13, which I'm using daily, but this backpack is not bad at all. It's too bad. I'm getting all those toys every single time and then I have to return them the day after.